My previous video illustrated a simple case of the Bayes theorem, and now I'd just like to take it up a notch and use the next sample question that is in Miller chapter 6, and so that's FRM assigned. And this is an interesting application of the Bayes theorem. It's just a little more difficult, and you have to bear with me because you can see that as a word problem, it's a little bit longer. But there's only three assumptions that are really given here, and that is all we need to answer the compound question. And the question is given as follows. You're an analyst at Astra Funds of Funds. Based on an examination of historical data, you determine that all fund managers fall into one of two groups. Stars are the best managers. The probability that a star will beat the market in any given year is 75%. So that's the first assumption we're given. Next, ordinary non-star managers, by contrast, are just as likely to beat the market as they are to underperform it. So that's the second assumption, and it's telling us that non-star managers have a 50% probability of beating the market. For both types of managers, the probability of beating the market is independent from one year to the next. Stars are rare. Of any given pool of managers, only 16% turn out to be stars. So that's the third and final assumption. It's all we need in order to answer the question. The question is, a new manager was added to your portfolio three years ago. Since then, the new manager has beaten the market every year. So the evidence we have, I'm using Bayes' terminology now, the evidence is that this manager has beat the market three years consecutively. What was the probability that the manager was a star when the manager was first added to the portfolio? Okay, I'm just going to answer that now because that's the sort of throwaway question. We are already given that. That, that is the probability before we have any information or evidence about their performance. And we were already told that of any given pool of managers, only 16% turn out to be stars. And so 16% is the answer to the question, what was the probability that the manager was a star when the manager was first added to the portfolio? So that's the baseline setup. Now we get to the base question. What is the probability that the manager is a star now? Because that is after we have the evidence of three years of outperformance. And then a follow-up, after observing the manager beat the market over the past three years, what is the probability that the manager will beat the market next year? Okay, so that's an interesting follow-on question. Okay, so to answer that, I am going to just take out the assumptions because I've already captured them on this spreadsheet. And then I'm just going to move this over a little bit here and show you how I have captured the uh, assumptions in this question in both the probability matrix and in terms of the tree format. As I've mentioned, I think sometimes in the Bayes theorem questions that the tree, for me anyway, is more intuitive. But I've also captured some of the probability matrix because I think it's just a matter of style and sometimes it depends on the question. So I also have illustrated here uh, the inputs that were given. The only three inputs were given are here in yellow, 16, 75, and 50. Those are hard-coded as input assumptions. But in terms of the tree, we, we know that of managers, 16% are stars and 84% are not stars. And so these are unconditional probabilities. That's before we have any information. We just expect that 16% of managers are stars. But we're also told that um, so, uh, if the manager is a star, there's a 75% probability they beat the market and therefore a 25% probability that they do not beat the market. So the 75% is a conditional probability. 75% probability of beating the market conditional on being a star. Now, this also allows us to start populate the probability matrix. Because we can see here in the bottom row, I have these unconditional probabilities. 16% unconditional probability of being a star. The fact that 75% of the stars beat the market allows me to populate these two cells because the 12% is a joint probability of a star beating the market, which is that 12% is simply 16% multiplied by 75%. 
And we, if you like to think about it in terms of the tree, that's the joint probability of a star beating the market. The joint probability of this outcome here is 16% times 75%, which is 12%. The, okay, so that's the 12. And in terms of the four, that's the joint probability of a star not beating the market, which is the 16% multiplied by the 25% or 4%. Similarly, for the non-star managers where we have an unconditional probability of 84%, the joint probability of a non-star beating the market, that's right here, is 42%. And that is simply the joint probability of ending up in this outcome, 84% multiplied by 50% is 42%. And the joint probability of a non-star not beating the market is 84% times 50% or 42%. And in this way, you can see I've uh, populated the probability matrix inside the cells of a probability matrix by definition are joint probabilities and they need to sum to 100% as they, as they do here. And then the row outside here is unconditional probabilities. And that means this column out here is also an unconditional probability. So for example, the unconditional probability that somebody beats the market is 54%. But we can go ahead and answer the questions now by applying the Bayes theorem. And, but we need, um, we, need the, we need something for the numerator and the denominator. So that's, I have all these down here, but I'll rewrite it here because this can get a little bit tricky. The first thing we need for Bayes is the probability the conditional probability that a star beats the market three years in a row. So we see how we express that. The conditional probability of beating the market three years in a row in the event that we have or given that or conditional on a star manager. And, and actually, that's, uh, we, are, we were given the assumption that the performance is independent from year to year, which allows us to take the 75% here and simply cube it such that the answer to that, the answer to the this question that a star manager beats the market three years in a row is 42.19%. The next thing we need is the unconditional probability of beating the market three years in a row. So notice that's not conditional, that's not joint, that's unconditional, and really then refers to any, uh, ending up in either of these outcomes, but for three beating the market three years in a row. Okay, so that's not too bad either because that's just, if they're a star performer and they beat the market three years in a row, we already know that's 75% cubed. We get to cube it because of independence, but that's for 16% of our population. And we would add that to the, for the non-star managers, they're going to, uh, beat the market three years in a row with probability 50% cubed, and but that is multiplied by or weighted by, that's a 84% of the population. And that's gonna get us 17.25%. That's right here, as the unconditional probability of beating the market three years in a row, unconditional to their star status. Okay, so we've got what we need to answer the Bayes question. And that first Bayes question is right here, really, because it's after we have the evidence. So the evidence is observing the manager beat the market over the past three years. What is the problem? No, I'm sorry. It's right here. What is the probability that the manager, that first Bayes question is right here. What is the probability that this manager is a star now? And so that is the probability of a star manager condi conditional on the evidence of, <coughs> excuse me, beating the market three years in a row. So it's really just a conditional question. And we know that the Bayes, I mentioned in the previous video that Bayes isn't too bad. It's just a solving for a conditional probability by taking a joint probability and dividing by an unconditional probability. So that's the Bayes theorem really. A conditional is equal to a joint divided by an unconditional. In this case, the joint probability is the joint probability of a star manager and beating the market three years in a row, um, although we break it down into its components. The joint probability 
of a star manager beating the market three years in a row is the conditional probability of beating the market three years in a row, given they are a star, multiplied by the unconditional probability that they are a star. See how that, that itself is the joint probability of a star manager beating the market three years in a row. And we divide that by the unconditional probability of beating the market three years in a row. And visually, I think of this as, you know, if we just keep in mind we're talking about three beats, we're really looking for, we're given the evidence that they beat the market three years in a row, which means that could, they, that could have come from here or here. And we'd like to know the probability that it's really a star that did this. So we're really sort of visually, the way I think about this is we're looking at the probability that we ended up here out of the full set of outcomes is both of these together. And so that's what this Bayes is doing. It's dividing this joint probability in the numerator by the unconditional probability of beating the market three years in a row. And, and really, we've already solved um, all of this. This conditional probability that a star manager beat the market uh, three years in a row is already solved for, it's this 42.19%. I just did that, 42.19% multiplied by the unconditional probability of being a star manager, which, get, which is given to us as an assumption of 16%, divided by the unconditional probability of beating the market three years in a row, which we just solved for as that weighted average. Uh, so that was this, that's the 17.25%. And that is the solution to our base theorem. And you can see it's down here. It's 39.13%. Okay, so just we step back here to what Bayes' theorem did for us. We had this unconditional expectation that a manager is a star because that's true of the population, that 16% of the, of the population are stars. So when the manager joined the fund three years ago, we had, rightly, a 16% unconditional probability that they were a star. However, now we have the new evidence of three years of consecutive outperformance. And so that's the, that's the evidence that allows us to calculate this posterior probability. And notice how it's jumped up to. If they've outperformed three years in a row, we now have a higher, much more confident, 39.13% probability that they are a star manager. Okay, so then the final question was right here. Um, after uh, making this observation, what is the probability that the manager will beat the market next year? If you were like me at first, actually, this one stumped me a little bit because I thought, wait, do I have that information? But the solution here, pretty, uh, pretty, just pretty clever. And once you see it, it makes sense. There, he's asking for the probability of beating the market, but with, but updated with our new posterior probabilities. So, in other words. Um, given the three years of cumulative performance, we now have, as Bayes just showed us, a 39.13% probability that we have a star manager, and we know they beat the market with 75% probability, meaning there's a 1 minus 39.13 or 60.87% probability that it's not a star based on three years of outperformance, didn't draw that very well, and multiply by 50%. So you see how we just revised the unconditional probabilities based on the new evidence to now say going forward um, to account for the possibility this may not be a star manager and now the probability they'll beat next year is 59.78%. So that's interesting because notice we had here an unconditional, we have an unconditional probability beating the market of 54%. And that's unconditional to this mix of stars and non-stars. But if we've had three years of outperformance now, we have a right to have a higher expectation, a higher probability that this is a star manager, and that increases the unconditional probability that they will beat the market next year. So a really interesting problem, I think, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.